This is part 107 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle login information received from the external login provider such as Google for example. This is continuation to our previous video part 106. So please watch part 106 before proceeding. Now, if we want to log in using Google, we click the Google button on our application login page. The request is then redirected to Google sign in page and here we provide our Google login credentials. Upon successful authentication, Google will then redirect that request back to our application and within our application, a pre-configured callback function will be executed. Notice on our application login page, when we click Google button, we are redirected to Google sign in page. Here, let's provide our Google login credentials. Notice upon successful authentication, the request is redirected back to external login callback action within the account controller. At the moment, we have a 404 error. That's because we do not have this action within the account controller. Now, if you're wondering why did Google redirect the request back to external login callback action? Well, that's because if we take a look at external login action, notice that is the URL we have configured as the callback URI. Now, let's include this external login callback action within our account controller. The name of the method is external login callback and it has two input parameters, return URL and remote error. We'll see the use of this return URL parameter in action in just a bit. First, we check if this parameter value is null. If it is, then we initialize it to the application root URL. Otherwise, it will have the value of the return URL. Next, we check the second parameter, remote error. If it is not null, that means we have received some error information from the external login provider, Google, for example. So we add that error to the model state and then send the user to login view. So the end user can see the error received from the external login provider. And this login view requires an instance of login view model, which we are constructing right here. Next, we want to get the external login information about the user from the external login provider. So for that, we are using this method, get external login info async of the sign in manager service. If this info object is null, that means we have not received any external login information and we basically cannot continue. So we add this error message to the model state and then re-display the login view. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns an object of type external login info. Now, if you're wondering what external login information will we have in this object? Well, to understand that, let's place a breakpoint right here. And if we run this project now, we will get an error because the return type of this method is not satisfied. So for now, to fix this error, let's temporarily return the login view and then run the project in debug mode. Let's navigate to the login view and then click the Google button. I'm already logged into my Google account, so the breakpoint is hit. And when we inspect this object, notice we have the login provider set to Google. The provider display name is also Google. We have the provider key, which is the unique value to identify this user at the external login provider. And we also have claims principle. And if we take a look at this claims principle, we've got several claims here. And if we inspect these claims, Notice we have the name claim, given name, surname, and email address claims. Now let's stop debugging. If this external login info object is not null, that means we have received login information from the external login provider, in this case Google, and then we want to sign the user in using this external login provider. So for that, we use external login sign in async method of the sign in manager service. And to this method, we pass the login provider. Remember, on the external login info object, this login provider property returns our current external login provider. And we have seen that value is Google at the moment. And then the provider key, which is the unique identifier for the user provided by the external login provider, in this case, Google. And then if we want to create a persistent cookie, and if we want to bypass two-factor authentication. We'll discuss two-factor authentication in our upcoming videos. Now, one important point to keep in mind is for this method to succeed signing in the user, we will have to have a corresponding record in ASP.NET 
user logins table. So if we take a look at the data we have in this table, it's empty. Notice the columns we have here, login provider, provider key, and provider display name. This user ID column here is the foreign key referencing the user ID in ASP.NET users table. So the important point to keep in mind is for a given login provider with a given provider key, if we do not have a corresponding row in this ASP.NET user logins table, then most likely this external user might not have a corresponding local user account. And local user accounts are in ASP.NET users table. So the row in this table, in this ASP.NET user logins table, is linked to a row in ASP.NET users table using this user ID column. For a given external user, if we don't have a login in this table, then we don't know who that external user is. So this external login sign in async method will not succeed and we want to do something else different. First, let's fix this compilation error by bringing in system.security.claims namespace. If this method did not succeed, then we want to check if this external user has got a local account within our system. And if he has a local account, we want to link that external user to the local account we have. For that, we're using the email claim value. So from the external login provider, we receive this object, external login info, and we have seen that it has got the email claim. So we retrieve the email claim value. If it is not null, we'll try to find that user with the provided email. If we find the user, then that means that external user has a local account. So we want to add a row in this ASP.NET user logins table. This is done by this add login async method of the user manager service. After a row is added in ASP.NET user logins table, we then sign the user in and redirect him to the return URL. But what if we don't find a local user account with the provided email claim value? Well, if we can't find the user, we have to create a new local user account for that external user. So we create a new instance of the application user class, populate username and email properties, and then pass this user object to the create async method of the user manager service. This creates a new record in ASP.NET users table. And then as usual, we add a login for that new user and then sign him in. But what if we don't receive the email claim itself from the external login provider? Well, without email claim, we cannot continue any further. So we set error title on the viewback object to email claim not received from whoever is the login provider. And we set the error message to contact support on whatever is the support email. And then we return the error view. With all these changes in place, let's run the project in debug mode and see this in action. Click the Google button. Our breakpoint in the external login callback action is hit. Notice return URL is null. Remote error is also null. Let's continue execution. We got the login information from the external login provider, that is Google. So notice we have the external login info object. And if we inspect that, login provider is Google. Let's place another breakpoint right here and then continue execution. Notice the sign in result variable here failed. So signing in with this external login failed. Why is that? That's because for this login provider, Google, with this unique provider key, we don't have a corresponding login row in this ASP.NET user logins table. So let's place another breakpoint right here and then continue our execution further. Notice we got my email address from Google. If we take a look at ASP.NET users table, Notice this email column. We don't have a local user account with my email. So this method is going to return null. So if we don't find a local user account for the external user, we create a new user. So let's place another breakpoint here and then further continue our execution. This method create async on the user manager service should have inserted a new row in this ASP.NET users table. So let's refresh the data we have in this table. We have a new row now 
with my email. Look at the password hash column for this new row. It's null because we don't need password for this user to log into our application. We don't have to maintain that anymore because this user is going to use his external Google account to log into our application. Once we have a local user account created, we need to add a login in this ASP.NET user logins table. And this is the method that's going to do that for us, add login async on the user manager class. So let's place another breakpoint right here and then continue our execution. If we now take a look at ASP.NET user logins table, we have a new row for the external login, the login provider is Google and look at the user ID column. It ends with 4F43 and we know this is a foreign key referencing this ID column in our ASP.NET users table. Notice even this ID ends with 4F43. So linking this user account to this login. Now our final step is to sign the user in and then redirect to the return URL. So let's continue. There we go. We are logged in using the external login provider, Google. Now let's log out. And before we log back in, let me log out of my Google account in the browser and then navigate to the login view and then try to log in again using my Google account. Because I logged out from my Google account, it's asking me for my Google credentials once again. We hit our external login callback action again. This time, the flow in this method is going to be slightly different because the external Google account I have used already has a login in this ASP.NET user logins table. Let's continue the execution. If we now inspect this external login info object, notice the login provider is Google and the provider key ends with 0555. And if we take a look at ASP.NET user logins, notice we have a row here with the same login provider Google and provider key that ends with 0555. So this means at this point, if we continue execution, this method external login sign in async is going to succeed. So let's click continue, sign in result is succeeded. So all that is left to do is redirect the user to the return URL. So let's continue. There we go. We are signed in. Now let's understand the use of this return URL parameter. For that, first let's log out. And let me try to navigate to the create view. To be able to get to the create view, I must be first signed in. So the application redirected me to the login view. Now notice in the URL, it has included the return URL and the value for this is slash home slash create. These characters percentage 2F are the encoded characters for slash and this return URL is passed as a parameter to our callback function. So upon successful authentication, we can send the user to that URL he was trying to access before logging in. So let's try this. Notice the return URL is slash home slash create. Now let's disable all the breakpoints and then continue our execution. We are logged in and redirected to our create view that is slash home slash create. So that is the use of passing this return URL as a parameter to our callback function. When we register our application with Google, we have to specify the authorized redirect URI that is the callback URI. In ASP.NET Core, the default is slash sign in dash Google. If you want to change this, we can do so in configure services method of the startup class when we add our Google authentication middleware using this add Google method. To this method, we pass Google options object as a parameter. On this object, in addition to client ID and client secret, we also have callback path using which we can change the default callback URI if we want to. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.